that this is one of the uh, most remarkable ship reconstructions which is going on anywhere in the world. Uh, this is a very unusual ship because uh, she has genuine maritime heritage. She's 115 years old this year in 2018 and she was built in 1903 in Australia by Australians and she is a link between the early timber gatherers uh, and the, uh, the settlements uh, in the bush. So the ship then was bought in by Henry Jones, went to Hobart and she carried uh, timber and jam pulp uh, up to uh, up the Yarra River to Little Dock, which is where the World Trade Center is now, and then went back to Hobart. And then the return cargo again was jam pulp and timber. Until 1943, when the ship was commandeered by the Australian Army and the Water Transport Corps, and uh, she was then uh, de-rigged, turned into a troop and ammunition carrier, and went to the Pacific Islands. And her last um, big fling was in the Battle for Ley, when she carried 800 troops into Ley in uh, New Britain. In 1975, the ship was then pensioned off, and Sail and Adventure, the company that now owns and operates the ship, uh, bought her because they were looking for a vessel to turn into a sail training ship. We uh, are restoring her partly because she is the only one of her type left. So not only does she have genuine maritime heritage, but uh, the ship also is a community project right in the middle of Docklands where people can come and see what we're actually doing and just to walk around and have a tour of the workshop and see these traditional marine crafts um, underway. The people who are doing the type of work we're doing, which is uh, cutting out uh, very complex shapes and steaming timbers and putting together a large hull uh, is very unusual. We would like to be a centre where we can carry on that training and have those people work on other ships coming in. So there's a marine industry aspect to this. We're a youth sail training organisation and we call this the voyage of a lifetime because we know from the 6,000 or so young people that sailed on the ship between 1988 and 1999 that this is a very effective way of changing young people's lives. So that young people come along to us and one example uh, is you know, Joanne who has written her own song about the ship, she was a trainee, came back to us and said I'm absolutely delighted that you're doing this project. Here is my journal, which uh, I uh, had when I was a trainee in the 90s, and I carry it around with me because it was the most important thing that happened to me in my life. And I want my children to have that experience and other people's experience. And it is so valuable to her. I mean, she gets quite emotional about it, as a lot of us do. And our volunteer group, uh, which is shepherded by the Elmadopal Supporters Club, takes people from the general population and they work on the ship. And those people have put in, uh, and by next month it will be 60,000 hours of volunteer work. And those people are developing from, some of them were skilled when they started, some of them had no relevant skills other than the ability to listen and, and, and learn and concentrate and do the job. And but to do that, uh, to help them along, we need professional labour to do the difficult bits to reach commercial survey. This is a professional job, uh, so it doesn't just have to look good, it also has to uh, fulfil all modern statutory requirements for a passenger vessel. Uh, we're trying to talk to the general public. We're not just talking to those people who are already committed to old wooden sailing ships or even to sail training. This is people who are interested in young people, interested in uh, uh, tourism visitations to Victoria, to community strengthening and to preserving maritime heritage. So those 95% of the population who are not already committed to the cause will be committed to other aspects of what we're doing. And what we need is now uh, the remaining funding to get this project to a completion stage.